In this video we'll look at primary and secondary research and we'll look at sources of primary and secondary data. The decision makers require accurate and reliable information in order to make informed decisions. Good decisions rely on good information. Um, the initial decision to form a business may be entrepreneurial and may be based on a psychological stance of the entrepreneur to enter the business and take risk and so on and that may be uh, not based on a lot of evidence it may be based on uh, a feeling that the entrepreneur has but once the business is established generally speaking decisions are based on information if possible and to that end uh, the company tries to tap into sources of information, sources of data, which it then translates into information, I should say. So it taps into sources of data and then it, it refines the data, it manipulates the data, it processes the data into information and then uses that information to try to make informed decisions. Data is gathered uh, through primary and secondary research methods. So there are two types of data that's collected for this purpose. Um, the two types of data is primary and secondary. Data is then transformed into information through uh, qualitative and quantitative methods. These may be statistical methods, there may be computer programs, there may be different ways of refining information and processing it through various algorithms or methods of calculation or whatever. So acquiring the, the data is the first step and then analyzing it to get a meaningful picture of what the data is saying and then use that for decision making. Let's look at primary data. Primary research is first hand data which was collected solely for its purpose and that's a good definition of primary research. It's first hand, it's collected for the purpose for which it is, it is intended. So it's primary research. In regards to decision making, solutions are sometimes obtained through collecting primary data which is aimed specifically uh, at that problem. So sometimes uh, companies face a problem and they collect data to try to get an insight into the problem or the nature of the problem. Now that's primary research. It's focused entirely on the problem and the data is collected for the purpose of resolving the issue. Primary data is collected through questionnaires, focus groups, interviews, surveys, observations. And the data, as I said, is then transferred into information. It's transferred through the application of some uh, method, some, some method of analysis into information. So primary data is focused on some issue and it's data collected specifically to give an insight into that issue. It's not collected for any other purposes, just collected for the purpose of resolving a particular issue or giving an insight into a particular issue. And the different methods, well, so the questionnaire, um, trying to find out people's attitudes towards some product or some image that the the company is trying to project or something of this nature. So there could be questionnaires, or it could be focus groups, inviting people in and uh, giving them small amount of remuneration and hospitality, and asking them to participate in giving their opinions about certain issues or certain products or something of this nature. Or it could be interviews or surveys or observations. It could be uh, a member of staff, a trained member of staff, 
goes into the marketplace and, and makes direct observations of how customers see the product and what the customers are saying about the product and, and how they, they judge the product. So it could be observations and that's a primary source of information. Secondary data. Well, secondary data is data that already exists from different sources. Now, this is the information that's already there. It, it's, it's data, I should say, that's already there. It's, it's being collected for different, from different sources. It, it, it's being collected for us by the government. It could be census data. That the company may be able to use to look out to look at the, the demographics of different regions, perhaps. Now that would be secondary data, the use of secondary data. It could be data that's been collected by newspapers on some particular topic. Now it's that data may be useful for companies to give to help the companies get an insight into some issue as well. But it wasn't collected by the company for that purpose. It was collected by perhaps newspapers to give some insight into an issue and the company happened to use it. It's secondary. Reliability and validity of secondary data is questionable. Um, the, the data may have been obtained for a different purpose. So uh, when dealing with secondary data the reliability of the data and the validity of the data uh, may be issues that need to be considered. But it's cheap. It's cheap to use. The, the data has been collected perhaps by, as I said, newspapers or the media. It's been collected by research companies. It's been collected by universities. It's been collected by the government. And it's published. It's published data. And then the companies can just access the, the data that's been published, uh, take out the, the data that they feel is useful for their purposes, uh, refine that data and turn it into information that relates to their business. <coughs> so um, that's secondary data. It could be, for example, um, the government collects data on the economy, on income levels and how income levels are changing over time. Well, the company can extract that data and think that because income levels are increasing, because the data shows it's increasing, they may have extra sales. Um, so they're using secondary data um, to give an insight into what's happening in their own particular market. There are two types of secondary data, internal and external. Secondary data is further divided into two categories, official, for example, government data, health, education data, and unofficial data in newspapers and in media sources. So there's secondary data, which could be classified as official secondary data, governments and so on, unofficial, newspapers, media, and so on. So the internal... Um, I said a moment ago that, sorry, there was a, on point three, there are two types second, of secondary data, internal and external, and then I said the secondary data could be further divided into official and unofficial. Now let's go back to the internal. Internal secondary data exists within the organization. Only the organization has access to this data and use it for its own purpose. So it's it's secondary data, but it exists within the company. Now, there are various types here. So we could look at the departments, say, within a, a particular business, and the types of data that the departments may have, which could be used for some sort of analysis. For example, the accounts department. It'll have financial statements and audits and information regarding inventories and uh, financial data. Now, this could be picked off the computer, perhaps it's held in a database, could be picked off the computer and processed by uh, some statistical package, perhaps the um, statistical package for the social sciences, which is known as SPSS, statistical package for the social sciences. So the data is picked off the financial part of the business and it's processed statistically. 
so trends could be worked out about the financial performance of the business and seasonal factors when extra sales take place throughout the year and if there's seasonal factors involved and so it's secondary data the data is not being collected for this type of analysis the data was collected by the accounts department but it could be used for this other purpose it's secondary data internal secondary data likewise sales and marketing they have sales reports customer complaints and satisfaction market research reports these were collected by the marketing department to help them uh, do their work more effectively however that data once it's within the business it's internal data and it's secondary so it could be used by the business to give an insight into some aspect of the business it can be processed and analyzed uh, it's quantitative perhaps it could be analyzed statistically it could be qualitative and I'll talk about qualitative data later but qualitative in the sense that uh, it's people's opinions about the product or whatever but nonetheless it's secondary data that could be used uh, production and operations um, a record of machinery and its efficiency capacity and efficiency um, process flow charts again these are collected by the production department uh, for their purposes but it could be used uh, for wider decision making within the business it's secondary data and it's internal so the the senior management have access to that data and they can analyze the data human resources have training programs and staff retention statistics and turnover rates and so on and that could be analyzed as well so what comes out of this particular slide the one we've got here is that there are different departments within the business who are collecting data and and um, constantly in the process of updating its own data, their own databases but those databases can be perhaps accessed and used for different purposes it's secondary data it's the the second purpose the, the analysis that it undertakes on the second time round the data was not collected for that it was collected for the accounts department or for human resources or sales or whatever but it happens to be used and suitable for other types of analysis so it's secondary there are external sources of secondary data um, these are outside of the organization uh, data needs to be researched and obtained from external sources so these are outside but the data has to be collected from the external sources for example there's data in books which could be collected or in journals uh, which again would have to be researched and taken out of the journal and analyzed it could be the internet websites for example or marketing agencies sometimes produce reports and these can be used for decision making secondary data uh, the marketing agencies didn't produce it for the company they produced it perhaps to publish and so happens the company can use that data to help it make better decisions but secondary professional bodies collect information as well accountancy bodies and uh, marketing uh, the marketing uh, body the chartered institute of marketing um, different different professional bodies collect information and publish the information and perhaps some companies are able to access some of that information and use it to help them to make better decisions government statistics being an obvious one um, the government collect all sorts of statistics about the economy about uh, the social framework of the the country about different aspects of expenditure and taxation and so on and these may be useful to the business again secondary data now this idea of quantitative and qualitative information well quantitative information um, this is measurable it's information that's me it, it's it's in numbers so it's measurable uh, it's it's logical and data-led 
this type of research is is based on facts almost it, it's based on numbers so averages and distributions and standard deviations and trend lines and so on can be worked out from this type of information this type of data I should say so it's quantitative it's measurable people's views and opinions are measured through statistical and numerical data results can easily be translated into processes such as graphs and charts although it's it's hard information in the sense that it's, it's quantitative sometimes statisticians are able to try and gauge people's opinions uh, with numbers they're able to use let's say an attitudinal scale a scale that's designed to pick up people's attitudes towards certain things attitudinal scale uh, the famous one being Likert L-I-K-E-R-T Likert the Likert scale uh, asks people to what their opinion about a certain product is let's say uh, do they like the product a lot in which case it's a 5 do they dislike it a lot in which case it's a 1 so between 1 to 5 how do you like the product do you like it a lot 5 don't like it at all 1 uh, I like it quite a bit but ok it's a 4 or maybe a 3.5 so it's not a precise approach it's it's subjective because people are are trying to give numbers to their strength of preference for the product or against the product but it's using numbers so in that sense it's quantitative information is easy to quantify uh, analyze statistically and fairly reliable uh, I say fairly reliable because it's numbers and then numbers tend to be unambiguous a five is a five it doesn't matter what my opinion is it's still five so information based on quantitative uh, analysis and quantitative research information based there tends to be uh, more reliable and it's easier to analyze examples of quantitative methods well surveys closed questionnaires questionnaires can be yes or no in other words can be a zero or a one it could be experiments to try and find out what's the breaking point of a particular product or um, how robust as a product under certain conditions it could be based on observation by looking at it and taking measurements uh, with a stopwatch for example now qualitative information unlike quantitative information which relies on numbers and statistics qualitative information is focused on meaning and opinions this means it's it's a lot more vague it's qualitative it's it's looking at the meanings of certain issues and the opinions of the people about certain issues so it's not it can't be measured it, it's uh, the strength of feelings people try to pick them up as I said earlier in terms of let's say attitudinal scales how do you like the government a lot or don't like the government at all so we have the ends of a scale we have a zero I don't like the government we have the other end of the scale it's a five I like the government a lot or it could be a seven I like the government a lot depends on how we construct the scale this method is, is more descriptive therefore it's difficult to quantify it tends to be descriptive qualitative people want to describe how they feel about certain situations and the information may not be reliable it could be um, could be valid it could be true in the sense that that's what they really feel the trouble is if you ask them again next week the same questions they may give you a different set of answers their feelings might have changed so the results 
not necessarily reliable and different people will deal with the same question in different ways because we're people and we have different approaches to answering particular questions methods of quantitative information include open questions in questionnaires focus groups, observations, interviews, case studies so if we have a focus group, we have a number of people in a room and we ask them how they feel about a particular company uh, we might get a whole range of responses and some of the responses may be relevant, some are not so relevant, some are a bit confused some like it a lot and some don't like it too much and so how do we get an overall picture from all of those different responses it, it's qualitative it's it's not hard it's it's not numbers we can't work out an average we can't just take all of the responses and average them out it, it shows the depth of feeling and that might be its strength because it, it does show the depth of feeling, of feeling. Quantitative, where people give back numbers and use, let's say, the attitudinal scale and say, how do you feel about the company? And some people said five, some people said three, some people said one, some people said four, and so on. And if you worked out the average and the average came to three and a half, well, what does that mean exactly? And it doesn't necessarily mean the strength of feelings. The strength of feelings may have been lost somewhere in the whole exercise. So we have two types of data quantitative and qualitative. Now the impact on decision making. Well organizations combine qualitative and quantitative research in order to obtain valid and reliable results uh, to assist management decision making and that's probably a good approach because organizations pick up information or data which to process into information they pick up the data from different directions they, they try to pick up quantitative uh, data which they can analyze work out averages and trends and so on but they can also try to pick up people's opinions and try to work out how how people feel about particular issues associated with the company and this gives them an overall picture of how the company is doing and how the company is seen so perhaps using two approaches is a good idea quantitative information is favored over qualitative information because the results can be measured through mathematical models and formulas so generally speaking Quantitative is always the, the the most desirable method, if possible, because quantitative information can be graphed and charts can be drawn and statistics worked out and correlation coefficients and regression lines and averages and standard deviations and all sorts of statistics can be produced about quantitative information, whereas qualitative it's difficult. It, it gives a, a feeling for how many people liked the product or disliked the product. Or it's it's more difficult to deal with qualitative information. In decision making, uh, qualitative information requires management judgment and experience rather than reliance on a computer model, and that's an important thing to say because with qualitative information uh, it requires judgment, it requires management to assess the information and try to work out what the the data is telling is telling management and if the data can be processed into information and can be used for decision making it's management trying to assess that it's trying management has to to judge the data and judge the reliability of the data and and try to figure out what the data is saying with quantitative it numbers and numbers can be fed into a computer and the computer can run some application which processes the data and gives all sorts of statistics 
and that is in a sense more objective whereas the qualitative is more subjective it's more relying on the feeling of the management as to what the data is trying to say so in this session what we've done is we've looked at um, primary and secondary sources of research we've looked at different types of data uh, internal external uh, secondary and primary and then we've gone on to look at quantitative and qualitative these are uh, it's essential to understand these differences so that when we see data we can recognize uh, whether it's quantitative or qualitative and whether it's primary data or secondary data and, and look at the advantages and disadvantages of all the different types. Well, that's all we're going to deal with in this class so let's leave it at that now and say thank you for watching.